Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. We're in the midst of week four action, where we are about to cast a best of five match between Zynga and Palantir. But wait, you say, what is the After Hours Gaming League? Allow me to elucidate. The After Hours Gaming League, just head to the website that is listed right there on your screen, and you will find this. You even see my mouse cursor here, the After Hours Gaming League. It is a for fun corporate league where top companies duke it out on the virtual battlefield for charity. We are casting the StarCraft A League. Let's go ahead and take a look at the teams that are competing in this year's league. You see them listed out, many companies you know and love. You might even be on Facebook right now. You might forget the website and Google it. Or maybe you're at work and you just want to play some games and Zynga. And maybe you've just never heard of Palantir outside of Lord of the Rings. That's okay. Have no fear. All the information you'll ever need to know about all these teams is right here. Members from these varying companies form teams to duke it out against one another in a best of five pro league style format. The winner of the league after many, many months of play will be crowned the champion and not only will that team win the famous day nine no prize, but that team will in fact win $5,000 to donate to the charity of their choosing. The first team, Team Palantir. Oh yes. Most notable because my best friend Tristan works at Palantir, but also they are playing for the CIA Officers Memorial Foundation, performed very well, got to the top eight of last season's AHGL, and you can see all the information you'll ever need to know about them. Their opponents! None other than Zynga, the makers of the games that you play non-stop on Facebook and various other locales playing for Save the Children. Right now struggling a little bit, currently standing at 1 and 3 in the AHGL standings. Whereas they got second place in the Season 1 against Microsoft. Can they do a comeback and make it all the way to the finals yet again? We are about to find out heading into this match. I'll just like to note the team logo of Team Microsoft is the greatest logo that you will ever hear. Macro hard, Microsoft. As we go ahead and load up the overlays, we see that spawning down in the bottom left hand corner from Team Zynga, the Zerg, Fredo. Uh, clap, 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 clap. And spawning in the top right corner. From Team Palantir, having absolutely no tag associated with his name, it is Virat. Now, due to the fact that... Alright, the sound is on. Forgive me. How embarrassing. Due to the fact that this is a for fun league, we are not going to do anything like get real serious in our analysis. We're going to enjoy the fact that we're playing some damn games of StarCraft. Huge thanks once again to Red Bull Gaming, the sponsor of the After Hours Gaming League, for encouraging people in their habits of having dat dare fun. Fredo, no doubt, starting as most deserved players would, sending out overlords in a fashion that will cause Protosses in all corners of the world to say, ah, there's yet more evidence that Zerg is imbalanced. Virat going to be doing the loop around, and what will he see? No evidence that anything is out of the ordinary. A pool going down at the two minute mark, a classic signal that he is not going for any sort of rush. He is going for that standard-esque macro, and because Virat likes to show off his ability to right-click in small clusters, you'll check the expansion. That's a hard sentence to finish off. Up in this corner, we also see Virat doing the standard pylon into uh, possibly the two base immortal sentry all-in. Building a pylon at the front of your base is often a telltale sign that the immortal sentry all-in is right around the corner and about to happen. A nexus is planted and Virat is rapidly on his way to perhaps some sort of cheese we may never know. Fredo now setting himself up aptly to get his expansion up and ah the nasty jerk probe of Virat blocks the expansion multiple times it does eventually go down but not after Fredo is inflamed with anger and rage at the current status. Uh, now, if this is Wings of Liberty, what I can do at this point is blindfold myself and cast till the 14 minute mark, where pretty much everyone does the exact same thing. But given that this is Heart of the Swarm that we're playing, baby, 
part of the swarm, it means that there's a couple of different possibilities that we can see out of Virat, the Protoss player, early on. No doubt he's going to get the Mama Ship core up in some way, shape, or form. Virat could also follow by going for Stargate play, very popular as White Ra has been showcasing some of that Sky Toss stratagem. We uh, can also see some of the standard Immortal Sentry all in, no reason that's not good. Uh, much to the delight of Star Tales, or excuse me, SK Telecom's parting. But also, we uh, will no doubt see the potential use of Swarm Hosts for the Zerg in the mid-game, the Hydralisks. It's really the layer tech when we see that Zerg player step into action. And oh no, Virat getting oh so sensationally upset. And scouting his opponent, seeing the expand is down. Yes, he says. Indeed, I know exactly what the Zerg is doing. Now, once again, casters generally blindfold themselves once they see it as a Zerg versus Protoss matchup and just say, aha, the 4 minute and 15 second mark. Everyone's seen Stefano, so we'll just go ahead and take our thirds at 4.15. No reason not to follow in those footsteps as Stefano is excellent at winning. The three base play, the Zerg standard, the Zerg bread and butter, but what will it entail now that we are in Heart of the Schwarm? Hopefully it will entail some Heart of the Schwarma because I'm really hungry and I love Greek food. Virat continuing to build his probes up in the main base, getting the double gas, the stalker coming out. Everything seems to be as it would be expected, but what is going to be going down with that next set of gas? Interestingly, no mama ship core, no mothership in sight. Will there be some sort of Stargate tech? This looks like the placement that would indicate Stargate tech. And a robo facility! Huh. Huh. Now, for any of you who are watching on the archives, I'd like to note that these casts are performed live Wednesday nights on uh, twitch.tv slash day9tv. And the live chat provides wonderful applause to both sides and notes that shawarma is not Greek food, but is in fact Arabic. That's fine. I went to a restaurant that said Greek food and ordered shawarma. Forgive me for being someone who trusted uh, the ever so cruel and deceitful restaurants of Los Angeles. Fredo, uh, constructing his Roach Warren. This is a very early Roach Warren. Ordinarily, seven minutes is about the timing that players are constructing Roach Warrens. But given all the possibilities for aggression, we're seeing Zergs be a little more tentative in these matchups. We're seeing, wow, yes, look at this. The uh, very early Spine and Spore Crawler. No longer is the Evolution Chamber needed to build those Spore Crawlers, as we can tell in the Structures tab. No Evo Chamber is yet been planted, but we will see a, a fairly typical 7 minute 30 second hatch out of Fredo. Virat will pick off all the scouts. And Virat is doing something that looks like an immortal sentry all in. Where's the blindfold? Geyser's going down for Fredo. There's a couple of paths that Fredo can take. If he should decide, hey, I'm pretty sure my opponent is going for an all-in, he can gas all the way up to six geysers quite quickly after he gets a couple extra rounds of drones in. And then he can go straight for mass zergling, mass infester, and hold this off pretty comfortably. Right now, Vera, oh my god. Oh my god, he's adding on a grand total of eight gateways. Don't hate the eight gate that exacerbates AHGL's game state. And I have used that rhyme before, but it was so good, why not use it twice? Yep, Fredo adding on the extra extractors and, ooh, going for a spire. Now, in terms of time, this is 100 seconds, and the Mutalists take another 40 seconds to build, or excuse me, 30 seconds to build, <laughs> so that's about two minutes of time. If our Zerg hero, Fredo, can hold on for two minutes and get those Mutalists out, it's going to be a difficult uh, defense for Virat. Virat may very well lose. If Virat takes his time, that is going to be the recipe for disaster, but Virat, we see already getting that Warp Prism out. It's coming out a little bit slowly. But fortunately, he has all the key components to this push. Sentries, Immortals, he has all the key components to this push. We're starting to see that Zergling production kick into high gear. Fredo's looking very light on the defenses. The Warpens have not happened yet. Oh no. Heart of the Liberty coming out of Virat going straight in for the Immortal Sentry all in. Why not? Fredo looks like he's going to be abandoned in this expansion. He's already pulled back the drones. The drones have been sent back to the expo. Zynga's Fredo, oh, who was an ace player for Zynga in seasons one and two, now just sacrificing the expansion. All right, looks like the Spire is now finished up. 
we are starting to see eight mutalisks in production right away the zerglings seeing if they can maybe set up a counterattack. there's actually somewhat of a light defense at the front it's all just wall ends but virat is just trundling forward is this really going to be the end I mean, I didn't guarantee that the games would be back and forth or crazy. These are tournament games where people are dedicated to winning. And Virat from Team Palantir, who got cut short, unable to get to the semifinals last year. Now they are going to try to sp spam out in game number one. The crushing ever so deadly Immortal Sentry all in. And right now, Fredo pulling back to retreat. The Zergling counterattack at the front has eliminated a pylon. Not a supply block in sight except for the Zerg supply block. The Mutals are going to come in. But there's so many things that shoot up Fredo. Oh, with a good game. That does mean that at this point in time, Fredo losing it for Zynga. Virat from Team Palantir coming up with the, with the win. Which means we are heading right on into game number two. Where we're about to see, oh my goodness. It's Varmuk from Zynga against my good friend Tristan from Palantir. What will happen, guys? Stay tuned. The best of five has just begun between Zynga and Palantir and AHGL. Stay tuned, guys.